Uh, today, we are fortunate to have um, uh, a seminar uh, from uh, a practitioner a, who is also an academic on an interesting subject of the uh, interbank market a, a lending a relationships um, in interbank lending markets. Uh, studies of the interbank market a, um, have been few and far between, a, and mainly concentrating on OECD markets. So in all OECD countries, we have seen how banks interact a, um, uh, in the 24-hour a, a trading a, a relationships, a, um, but a very few studies concentrating on developing countries and even uh, on Africa. Within the Center for Global Finance, uh, we have uh, been able to share with you uh, a couple of uh, empirical studies uh, on the interbank market uh, over the last uh, um, five years. Uh, and this is one of them that looks at especially uh, the uh, interbank lending markets, the relationships, how they are formed among the participating banks, and trying to understand whether these relationships a uh, um, formed, driven, formed and driven by uh, either reputation or governance or competitive advantage other factors. And this knowledge is so important for you know practitioners, for policymakers, especially for policymakers in terms of regulation and in terms of the peer mechanism for regulation. But so important for practitioners because uh, um, um, uh, bank CEOs would like to strategize themselves on how they could be able to get access to finance from other banks within the interbank market rather than going to the central bank uh, on the uh, uh, lender for last resort window. Uh, um, uh, they could be able to uh, uh, negotiate um, access to finance among themselves at a reasonable rate and within reasonable conditions, and sometimes without any need for a collateral. So this is one of the studies. And uh, this paper, again, we are fortunate to have a, a one of us, a Dr. Anosi Ikimaro, a, who a, um, a was in SOAS a, for quite a long time, both doing his a master's in research, a, and then a, from then on, a, completing uh, his PhD uh, uh, in the interbank market, the same topic. A, uh, within the Center for Global Finance at SOAS Universal Land here, completing his work last year in 2022 and graduating from a same institution. But Anosi is now a practitioner. Uh, he is the managing director of Optimum Global Capital. This is uh, a boutique investment bank which is headquartered in Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, previously, he has also been uh, active uh, in as a practitioner. He previously worked at Investment One Financial Services, a former GTB asset management, is which is one of the leading investment banks uh, in Nigeria. Uh, it is very interesting to have a combination of an academic as well as a practitioner because he's able to actually spotlight a, some uh, issues within the research relationships a measurement of variables, interpretation of results, and what they mean for policymakers or for uh, practitioners. And this is just one example of the work that uh, uh, he has with respect to the interbank market. And we are very delighted that uh, Anosi uh, uh, could um, uh, spare his uh, very highly priced time uh, and spend it with us here discussing uh, this paper. Now, in the true spirit of the Center for Global Finance, um, I'd like to encourage you participants uh, to be generous with your feedback and comments, uh, uh, which you can put in the chat or you can raise as we go. But of course, we shall have a good interaction at the end of the presentation to be able to uh, brainstorm and exchange ideas on this very important topic and even looking into cross extensions uh, of this work.
Okay, so please uh, I, uh, join me in welcoming uh, Anosi for this presentation. Thank you, Anosi. You have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. So that, so that was a very generous uh, introduction. That's uh, um, set me up on the on the on the pedestal that I hope I can feel. Um, I don't know if I'm if, if I'm very much audible. Yes, yes. So we hear you loud and clear. Yes. Okay, great. All right. So um, um, today I'll be taking us through. Um, this is a paper that uh, um, I think for me uh, personally has been um, was a very interesting. Um, work that I, I enjoy thoroughly doing. And um, what, what, I, what, what I try to do in this paper is to um, pretty much examine uh, you know, the interbank market from, from a very, um, I would call, a very relatable or practitioner or uh, practical perspective. Here, I look at reputation, governance, and competitive advantage, and how those factors um, play out in the, in the interbank market. Um, first of all, I'll just take us through an introduction, and then go a bit into the literature review and hypothesis development. And then um, I would uh, discuss the methodology um, uh, approach used and the, and the data um, that we used as well. And then I'll go into the results and the findings and finally the conclusions. So the, the interbank markets is a place where um, the redistribution of liquidity, um, of course, you know, banks um, pretty much trade liquidity amongst themselves. And you can pretty much characterize it as a self-regulatory um, a self-regulatory or a peer monitoring channel um, where um, you know banks um, lend at an unsecured uh, in an unsecured manner um, amongst themselves. Now, particularly in the interbank markets, um, if I may say, where we're looking at or the segment in which um, of focus here is the unsecured overnight lending segment, and the interbank market has other segments. And both for secured lending for longer tenures and also for other instruments such as uh, foreign exchange. Um, but if, for the purpose of this study, we are particularly examining the um, overnight unsecured lending segment of, um, of the interbank market. And because of the unsecured nature um, of this segment, um, trading amongst each other is. Um, it's pretty much a a peer to peer. It's as a result of a peer to peer evaluation of of um, the potential counterparty risk, um, and um, in doing that, um, banks essentially create um, and dissolve lending and borrowing relationships amongst themselves. Now, relationship lending is is not new to the banking literature in general. Um, you know, relationship lending has been studied in the wider banking context, um, you know, between bank um, as a borrower and their customers. And so relationship lending is evident in, in the very fabric of banking as a business in itself. Um, so um, it's almost intuitive um, to, um, to see that this uh, relationship um, sort of also um, exists within this um, um, unsecured overnight lending segment of the interbank market where banks lend to each other um, without collateral. And um, like any other activity of the bank, lending to each other is also a um, it's it, it's not it's not it's not an act of charity. It's it's also um, you know, um, a source of income in terms of the interest um, uh, interest earned from such lending activities. So naturally, uh, there is a profit tendency 
within this market or within this segment of the market as well. And um, so, given that it's all about relationship, one of the critical things that you know that struck me was what are the what are the drivers, what are the factors that you know influence the formation and the solution of those relationships. And um, so, looking at studies done um, in, in the literature. I could see that, well, first of all, there has been established um, relationship um, relationship lending within the interbank market studies by Temis Boy um, and all in 2015, in their paper in 2015, um, looked at how um, lending or borrowing relationships um, affects the volume um, of, um, of, 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 transactions between banks. Um, also, um, other studies have also looked at, um, you know, uh, the influence of, of um, the influence of ownership on the um, lending or borrowing behavior or pattern um, of banks within the interbank market. Um, also, to ownership and its, and its effects on, um, you know, the network topology a network structure of the interbank market. Because when banks lend to each other, um, they essentially create this network of um, loans between themselves. And um, studies have looked at, you know, the structure of those networks, borrowing from the literature of, um, from the computer science um, field, um, looking at uh, network effects and um, different network to topologies. And how perhaps that can affect um, the distribution of liquidity within the, the interbank market. Um, so ownership has also been seen to um, affect the position of a bank within the network, and those and that position um, has implications for the channel of um, liquidity distribution um, because in a in a network where perhaps you have a hub and spoke. Um, sort of structure where certain banks uh, form hubs um, and are, uh, you know, so important for the network um, to to function efficiently. Um, if that position is changed um, by some factors or as ownership, then that's 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 important. So um, there have been studies that have shown that the ownership of a bank. Um, can affect the position of the bank in in the interbank market, um, particularly study a study by uh, Sumar and Ozil Lirim in 2019 um, showed that. And, and uh, also, we can only still see page one or page two. Are you are you still on the introduction? Yes. Sir. Ah, okay. Okay, fine. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so so studies showed um, that. Um, in the Turkish interbank market, for instance, international banks changed the overall network structure. Um, and um, in the and some specific study too in the Ugandan interbank market, 2019 by Guiria and um, his colleagues showed that um, foreign banks actually benefited from lower borrowing rates. Um, also, to see your power. Is um, something that has been looked at in the in the uh, banking literature um, as having an effect on, on bank risk taking activity, for instance, and um, with particularly just within the wider markets. But no study has particularly looked at how CEO power may affect the um, um, pattern of behavior of banks within the interbank market. Now, studies have shown that. Uh, CEO power can influence the level of financial intermediation, so sort of creating more loans. Um, but those studies look at it from a bank customer perspective. Uh, no study has looked at it from the bank to bank or in the bank to bank perspective of an interbank market where the customer is another bank. Also, competition as well, um, such as market power, has also been um, has also been studied uh, quite extensively. 
and market power has been shown to increase financial intermediation activities, uh, such as granting more loans to customers and things like that. Again, within the bank to customer perspective, uh, where the customer is, 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 is a business or the household. Um, however, this hasn't been looked at within the context of the bank, of another bank being, being a customer, which is the case within the, inter the, within the interbank market. And so in this paper, we, we tend, we use this, um, we use this, um, 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 um uh, features or um, uh, factors to examine how those factors affect the relationship lending between banks within the context of the interbank market. So from bank to bank. Um, so how does the reputation of the bank, perhaps by ownership um, or um, through um, the effect of CEO power, um, in terms of governance and uh, competition in terms of market power, how does that affect um, the ability of a bank or the attractiveness of a bank um, in forming lending or borrowing relationships? So the uh, first aim of this, the aim of this objective essentially is to, the aim of this study rather is to um, look at the effect of reputation um, governance and competition on the attractiveness of a bank, either as a lender or a borrower within the bank markets so in the context of, of, of um, the bank-to-bank, -bank, uh, a bank-to-bank -bank relationship or a bank-to-bank -bank situation of lending. Um, also, too, within this context of, you know, the risk adversity, given the unsecured nature of these, of this overnight um, segment of the interbank market. And in, in doing that, we, in terms of our objectives, we first examine the influence of um, a foreign-owned bank on the attractiveness of a bank as a lender in the market. And then we also look at the effect of the power of the CEO of the bank as on the attractiveness of the bank as a lender as well. And then we, um, uh, the last objective is to see how market power um, um, as a proxy for competitiveness um, affects the perception or how it's perceived um, by lenders uh, through the attractiveness of a borrower um, as, a, um, a bor as a borrowing counterparty. So in terms of the um, going into the literature itself, um, we understand from the literature that banks may choose their counterparties either based on counterparty risk and would trade with potential, with preferential parties, uh, counterparties, either at a cost or, um, or, or at a benefits um, or at a low cost benefits, um, essentially. Um, so clearly, um, Relationship lending in itself is, 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 is evident in the interbank market. And um, as I mentioned earlier, it's also almost even intuitive, you know, if um, banks form relationships with businesses and households, it's, it's, it's expected that they are lending to each other in an unsecured manner would also be uh, badly driven by relationship. Whether it comes at a cost, um, at a higher cost or at a cost benefits um, to the bank. And um, obviously within the banking, uh, within the interbank market, banks themselves are segmented um, by size, uh, by ownership, and um, there have been, um, they have been evidence that, for instance, in Uganda, that foreign banks or foreign-owned banks have lending limits that they set on their local operating entity, and that affects the borrowing or the lending volume at which they lend to other banks. And you could also see the, uh, the paper by um, um, Bure in 20, 2019 also showed that um, these um, 
um, these internationally affiliated banks also prefer uh, lending to each other um, in terms of looking at their lending volumes. You know, from the from the study, you can see that um, international affiliates or internationally owned banks uh, tend to lend more to other internationally owned banks um, and less to uh, locally owned banks. Um, and this was attributed to possible lending limits um, imposed by the foreign uh, in, by, by the foreign parents. Also, too, um, um, the entry of foreign of an internationally owned bank into a local bank could signal a uh, positive signal of uh, of corporate governance. Um, a study by Sommer and um, was was in twenty nineteen. Um, showed that there was a positive effect on um, bank corporate governance um, um, by the by the um, entry of of foreign bank or foreign parents and buying a local a local operating bank and um, that positive signal could, could signal better stability and could boost its attractiveness as a lender but however as we've seen in, in the case of Uganda, perhaps because of the borrowing limits that may be set from, from these foreign banks, um, there could be a limiting effect or, act, or an actual negative effect of foreign ownership within the context of, an inter, of the interbank market. So they may not be attractive lenders to um, other banks, even though it, there may be a, a positive signal of, of of better corporate governance, but um, rep looking at ownership from the angle of reputation, um, the foreign banks may be may have a reputation of being more stringent in terms of of lending rules, and and but um, in in this study, which is uh, a single country study, um, we also take into cognizance the fact that the classification of a foreign bank may, may differ. Um, given that this study is, is on the Ugandan interbank market, um, which is an African interbank market, there are two types of foreign banks. One are banks that are internationally affiliated, where the headquarters may be um, outside Africa. And another may be Pan-African bank, Whose headquarters is within Africa, but not within the country. So um, we see this, um, should I say, <laughs> uh, unique um, um, situation as potentially um, potentially something that could provide um, some insights into how they may be perceived as as a lender, even though they are both foreign. And um, um, particularly, maybe the particularly the Pan African banks compared to the international banks may have different risk appetites um, because even though a foreign bank may impose lending limits, which is a you know which is perhaps due to risk uh, risk uh, policies, if those policies aren't there or those um, lending limits aren't there, then perhaps they may be more attractive. Because of the corporate governance or uh, the corporate governance reputation that may be assumed. So, our first, my apologies, our first, um, our first um, um, hypothesis um, is that the foreign ownership of a bank would negatively influence its attractiveness. Um, as a lender. However, we believe that leverage um, may, um, may be a mediating effect. Um, may be a mediating effect. This negative influence on the attractiveness of the lender. That's because um, um, if a bank participates perhaps more in the in the interbank markets or partic or is more highly levered and perhaps more risk uh, or less risk adverse, then they they may not have those limits that um, 
that may be negatively, uh, that could negatively affect the attractiveness of a, as a lender. Then we look at, um, from the angle of corporate governance, um, we look at the power of the CEO. Now, CEO power has um, been shown to literature uh, to positively affect uh, governance. And, um, you know, also, too, um, we've also seen that from the literature, we can also see that um, uh, more powerful CEOs would encourage risk taking and tossing and including increased financial uh, intermediation. And now, this is from the perspective again of a bank to customer, from bank to business, or a bank to household. Um, so we we look at this within the context of the interbank market, and we look at it and think, okay, how does this power of the CEO um, affect its attractiveness, or its how does that translate in the interbank in the context of of lending in the interbank market? Do banks um, see this um, uh, see a higher CEO power as as a signal of good governance and stability, or um, it perhaps it signals, you know, a, a higher risk taking and a more risky nature, or a more risky, um, um, a wrong, um, risky bank. And if CEOs have a higher power and could push through their own um, strategies um, more easily, <coughs> we see this potentially signaling um, um, bonding costs to borrowers because um, if there could be um, agency costs that arise from you know the um, higher influence of the CEO over the over, over the bank and um, and so therefore we we look at it and we think we are wondering okay is is isn't the agency cost much more, um, in much more, um, uh, isn't that much more highly perceived than the potential positive uh, governance effect? And given that the CEOs, or the CEOs have a higher power, they could most likely pursue strategies that are divergent from from their shareholders. And uh, that could definitely bring rise to agency costs. So our second, our second uh, uh, hypothesis um, states that the power of the CEO actually negatively influences, um, influences the attractiveness of the bank as a lending counterparty. And this is because we believe that the agency costs that arise from a higher CEO power um, presents bonding costs which will deter um, potential borrowers from forming relationships with that bank. Then we look at the issue of competitiveness. At the end of the day, banks operating the normal operation of the bank, borrowing, uh, taking deposits and lending to customers and businesses, is the primary is one of the primary reasons why banks may have to recourse to the interbank markets in the first place. And being that the interbank market is a market in itself, like um, you know, any other financial market, information is. Is um, is analyzed and and obtained um, from um, counterparties when making their decision to lend um, to a bank who wants to borrow. So, at the end of the day, that competition or the competitiveness of a bank, its wider operations within the um, within the banking uh, industry is also evaluated by potential lenders when they want to lend to a borrowing bank. And 
a belief that, or from the literature actually, we could see that banks who have a higher market power tend to increase their intermediation and grant more loans um, to more borrowers who they may not even have relationships with. This can be this can be put in the context of the interbank markets in two ways. One is that information perceived by lenders could affect how they see the riskiness of the bank. The other as well is that a higher market power and a higher tendency for financial intermediation may also um, translate to how they trade in the interbank market. However, interbank or market power from the wider perspective or from the business, from the uh, wider banking industry may not translate into market power within the interbank market. So we look at it from the context of the perception of that competition of that competition in terms of riskiness. Okay. Studies have also shown that banks who are who are more competitive or have a higher market power, though increasing their financial intermediation, can within the context or within an environment of low financial freedom still maintain a low risk profile. So even though a bank may be, even though a bank may be um, more competitive and granting out more loans, in certain environments where perhaps there's lower financial freedom, they could be perceived as having a lower risk profile. Study by uh, Santoso um, and um, his colleagues in 2021 bring rise to this particular um, notion. Looking at the context of the market in which we study, the Uganda interbank market, we believe that banks can be more competitive and still be uh, maintaining low risk profile. Sometimes, in another way, it may be the notion of the too big to fail. And within the context of the, of the interbank market, we see that even though we can say that the market power may be, um, may have a, um, uh, may have, may have a perception of the risk profile of a bank, the size matters because size in itself can positively influence the centrality of a bank within the network. Larger banks uh, could be could, could make up a hub within the network, could be major liquidity hubs within the network of the interbank market. Studies have shown um, studies have shown that. Um, um, you know, size can influence the centrality of, of, of a bank within the market. Although these, there have been several debates um, as to um, if it positively influences or negatively influences. And the, all these studies have looked at different um, interbank markets, uh, different within, like, within different jurisdictions. So Larger banks that have a bigger balance sheet and are more competitive or have a high market power could be deemed too big to fail and therefore may benefit from lower um, cost of borrowing within the interbank market. So, also, too, higher market power can also reflect higher profitability and operational efficiency, which will be positively looked at or positively um, 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 reflected on by, uh, by um, lending counterparties. So our hypothesis is that the market power of a bank positively influences its attractiveness with immediate effects of size 
because banks who are more competitive um, could be perceived as being uh, or can reflect higher profitability and operational efficiency and potentially they may be too big to fail. In terms of our data, we generously um, were, and with uh, great cooperation um, from the Bank of Uganda, we generously um, given access to proprietary data to carry out this study. Now, one of the limitations of this study is the availability of data because of the proprietary nature of it. But we were um, lucky enough um, and with, with great thanks to, to, to um, the, the folks at the Bank of Uganda for providing us with the required data to carry out this study. The BOU provided a data set containing daily transactions of interbank lending markets, Q1 2011 to Q2 2019. Now the names of the banks were anonymized um, uh, for data protection or for uh, protective uh, purposes. But however, bilateral transactions, minute by minute transactions were provided a daily basis from Q1 2011 to Q2 2019. They also provided us with um, bank balance sheet data uh, from Q1 2011 to Q3 2017. And then that data was augmented with bank with uh, balance sheet and uh, balance sheet data obtained from bank focus database uh, from 2000 and from Q3, Q4 2017 to Q2. Uh, 2019, and this data was uh, manipulated to provide to into pretty much quarterly uh, uh, quarterly uh, data on uh, for each variable. In terms of our variables um, of study. Our main dependent variables are the borrower preference index and the lender preference index, which um, um, is which is pretty much adopted from the study um, by uh, Temis Boy et al. in 2015, where they looked at um, um, the impact of um, the relationship status on the um, borrowing and lending volume of banks. And the, the borrower preference index um, attempts to calculate or captures the um, preference of a borrower um, um, to a particular um, lender. And the reverse is the case for uh, the lender preference index. The in degree and out degree um, figures are computed from um, the network, from monthly representations of network data that was generated from the minute-by-minute um, um, -minute transaction level data between the banks. And this was um, obtained from monthly representations of the network at every point in time over the, over the period of the data set. Um, so these were the two or two uh, main uh, um, Things used to calculate the BPI, the, that's the borrower preference index, and the LPI, which is the lender preference index. And then for each bank, their BPI and LPI are averaged um, over a quarter um, to present um, a quarterly representation of their average um, preference as a borrower and as a lender. In terms of our other variables, CEO power and market power, for the market power, we uh, followed, uh, we used the um, uh, originally uh, specified um, market power uh, ladder index um, 
and uh, amended it uh, for this study, uh, where P represents the total income to total assets, and um, MC, which is the marginal cost of uh, liquidity, um, is represented as uh, the change in total expenses um, divided by the change in uh, total assets over uh, the quarter. Our CEO power is, oh, sorry, my apologies. Uh, there's a typo there. That's uh, actually the bank ownership, uh, the first one where it's market power. The bank ownership um, was segmented into two, Pan-African banks and foreign banks. Uh, Pan-African banks being banks who have their headquarters in Nigeria, also oh, in, uh, uh, in Africa. Um, while foreign banks are those who have um, their headquarters outside Africa and outside Uganda as well. And we use a dummy variable where one represents if the bank is a foreign bank and zero if it's not. Um, and same thing to the Pan African, one if it's Pan African and uh, zero if it's not. And we expect um, the bank ownership to have a negative influence on. Uh, the lender preference uh, index of the bank. And we also expect um, CEO power to have a negative uh, impact on the um, lending preference of the bank. As explained earlier, the market power is borrowed from the lender index um, and uh, just modified for this study. And we expect the market power to be positive to have a positive the coefficient of the market power to be positive, a positive effect on the borrower preference index. We also have um, some other control variables, uh, which are bank specific, um, as well as um, um, environment environment specific to control for both bank specific characteristics. Um, as well as um, other um, uh, variables in terms of uh, the environment. Now, in terms of our bank specific um, bank specific uh, uh, control variables, we use the transaction volume, so borrowing volume or lending volume, and uh, the leverage, the size, and uh, the capital adequacy uh, ratio of the banks. Since uh, banks uh, set a minimum uh, capital adequacy, since the central bank sets a minimum capital adequacy, which banks can choose to maintain something above that, which could signal, um, which would signal, or you know, the risk uh, adversity uh, of a bank. Now, um, we expect the capital adequacy ratio to be positive uh, because. Um, Banks to have a positive influence on um, lender preference, borrower preference, because um, banks, uh, they, the more risky a bank, the less uh, attractive it could be. Um, the more insta unstable it, they could be uh, perceived. Also, to um, um, size, because size, uh, banks could, could tend to be more centrally located, particularly in the context of. Um, the market like Uganda, um, they we expect it to have a positive effect as they could be more attractive uh, trading counterparts or more attractive trading counterparts. Um, in terms of leverage, um, since we expect that, since leverage is a measure of um, financial stability, we expect that um, higher leverage could potentially harm um, the attractiveness of a bank and deter um, potential counterparts from forming relationships. While the transaction volumes um, are expected to be um, positive uh, to both uh, the lender preference index and the borrower preference index, um, in line with uh, findings from the paper by um, Tabith Boy um, in 2015. In terms of our environmental control variables, um, the Central bank rates is um, expected to be negative, uh, to have a negative influence on relationship formation. 
And this is because banks would uh, choose to either go to the central bank or go to, the, to other banks to, to um, take liquidity. And so um, if, it's, if it's cheaper uh, from the central bank, then there's likely be cost for banks to um, um, uh, take liquidity from the uh, central bank. As also to the case, maybe in the reverse, um, so if monetary policy rates are higher, the banks may be more incentivized to pack or to um, put their excess liquidity with the central bank rather than lend it out to other banks. Also, to we expect the average savings rates um, to be to positively influence the attractiveness of the bank. Um, uh, this is because this is because um, um, banks may um, rather seek interbank funding rather than increase deposits um, rates um, in order to um, attract more. Or, or funds to their bank. Um, we also um, use or look at um, foreign exchange. Um, this is because um, in the context of um, of the markets, uh, foreign exchange banks hold assets and liabilities in foreign currency, and uh, movements in exchange rates um, can provide um, um, reasons for banks to seek more liquidity to cover foreign exchange uh, trading positions. And so we expect that foreign exchange to positively influence the attractiveness uh, of, of, of the bank as a trading counterpart. Other macroeconomic variables, um, such as inflation and GDP, um, were, were not considered because this study is looking primarily at so just as a single as a single country. Um, in terms of the in terms of the um, in terms of the data, um, looking at all our variables, um, you see that our dependent variables, the LPI and PPI, are normally distributed. Um, um, the zeros uh, just uh, just provide or just show the uh, fact that some banks in some periods may not have acted as a lender or as a borrower within that period. Hence, why they will be uh, they will be um, around the uh, zero mark. Also, too, we uh, notice that uh, uh, the capital adequacy ratios. Of banks on average is 30 percent, which is much higher than the, or which was much higher than the average regulatory requirement of 15 percent within the same period. We also see maximum rates of 135 percent, which signals uh, so a very very high level of uh, uh, capital adequacy, and um, just shows that um, in the Ugandan um, 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 banks typically hold more reserves than required um, by by the by the regulator. Um, looking at the correlation matrix, um, we notice that um, foreign um, foreign ownership has a positive influence on on um, the preference or the attractiveness of a lender, um, which is in contrast to our um, initial. Um, into our hypothesis. Um, we um, also see that um, Pan-African um, um, international banks, Pan-African-owned banks, uh, also have a positive uh, influence. Um, we also observe that uh, CEO power has a negative influence on the preference of a lender, which is, consi which is consistent with our uh, initial hypothesis. And we also see that the market power of a bank also is positively uh, uh, correlated with uh, uh, the preference of a borrower um, within the within the bank market. We um, also um, notice that our control variables, capital adequacy ratio, leverage size, borrowing volume, lending volume, 
um, are all uh, significantly correlated with um, our um, dependent variables. Um, we also um, we also observed that the repo rate um, and the average loan rate were highly correlated with the central bank rate. Um, so we dropped the those two. We adopted the central bank rates as as a measure of of um, monetary policy rates. We also noticed that um, um, our two measures of size um, were um, highly correlated. So um, we um, so we dropped um, one measure and I adopted just one of the measures of size. In terms of covariance, um, we also see a similar. Um, we also see a similar um, 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 result where ownership is positively uh, correlated with um, attractiveness of a lender, while CEO power is negatively uh, um, correlated uh, co covariates with uh, the attractiveness of a lender and market power. Uh, this positive uh, uh, type of covariance with uh, the attractiveness of a borrower. Now, econometric models, we used a random index GLS model uh, to carry out our hypothesis. And um, I mean, for our first hypothesis, which is the effect of um, ownership on, on the attractiveness of a borrower, we um, expect the you know, side to, uh, to be to be negative, um, you know, to have a negative um, coefficient. Um, while for the second, uh, for our second hypothesis, uh, we um, expect that uh, to be um, positive, uh, to have a sorry, we expect it to be negative, to have a negative effect on on the preference of the, the lender. While uh, Mark, while um, uh, Sigma is expected to be um, positive, um, showing a positive relationship between uh, market power and the attractiveness of the borrower. Our results, our results from the um, our initial results from the random GLS, um, 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 the random GLS uh, model, um, are in contrast to uh, what we saw on on the correlation matrix, and in line or consistent with our hypothesis, where foreign banks have a negative um, correlation with um, with um, the attractiveness of the lender. However, uh, we see a large positive, um, a large positive mediating effect or leverage um, on the um, attractiveness of uh, of a lender. Uh, we also observe that um, when broken down on the chart specifically, we see that Pan African owned banks. Um, actually do have a positive influence rather than a negative influence um, on, on, on the attractiveness of your lender. In terms of CEO power, we observe that um, CEO power has a negative effect on the attractiveness of your lender um, with a positive mediating effect or of uh, capital efficiency. However, um, CEO power in itself is, um, is statistically significant um, in um, determining or in influencing the attractiveness of the lender, which is consistent with our second hypothesis um, that CEO power um, negatively influences the attractiveness um, of the lender. In terms of market power, we see, we see that market power does have a positive influence on the attractiveness of a borrower. 
and um, this is true in, in both um, um, sides of or in both approaches to the um, um, to the estimates of a random um, is the results without um, a robust estimator. Well, random robust is, is one with a robust estimator. And the, we see that market power is positive or positively influences the preference of a borrower uh, with a negative uh, mediating effect of size. So our um, results from the GLS, from the GLS uh, um, estimates are sure that um, our, um, our results are from our first model is um, consistent with the hypothesis where um, banks who um, um, are foreign-owned banks um, aren't attractive as a, as a lender um, in the interbank market. Um, this could be, or this can be attributed to the um, possible restrictions, uh, lending restrictions um, from the uh, from foreign parents, uh, which you know forms a reputation that is negatively perceived by by potential borrowers. However, we see that um, uh, this is uh, divergent for Pan African banks, um, who are more attractive as as as, as lenders, um, um, as because these um, such lending limits are not uh, usually imposed by by Pan African owned banks on their on their operating entities in other in other African markets. We also see that the um, CEO power um, negatively affects uh, the attractiveness of, of banks as a as a lending counterparty. And in line with that hypothesis, but some evidence that um, CEOs um, you know with a higher power may present some bonding costs that may dissuade um, the um, that may dissuade potential borrowers um, from forming relationships. And then um, um, lastly, we see that market power is positively correlated with the attractiveness of a bank as a borrower. Um, and this is consistent with the hypothesis um, that um, that um, higher market power it translates or translates to um, a, a perception of, uh, of better operational efficiency um, and profitability, um, which is perceived positively by lenders in the interbank market. Now, carry out some robustness checks um, to um, uh, for us to be able to. Um, um, uh, see or particularly deal with the issue of a uh, possible endogeneity um, within uh, within our, our our study. Um, we in this we take you know um, cognizance of the critique that um, that um, difference and system GMM estimators could easily generate. Um, instruments that are numerous and potentially suspect, and um, you know the use of many instruments may distort results and could provide false positive or invalid results. This may be, but uh, given the nature of the data availability in relation to this study and the number of um, of instruments are limited anyway, and um, so. Um, we we do not think we um, may um, use too many instruments, and that may distort um, results. And the main um, suspects are of possible um, from for possible um, endogeneity are the lending volume and borrowing volume. Um, this is because they are firstly highly correlated, as we could see from the correlation matrix. Highly correlated with, um, you know, with both the lender preference index and the borrower preference index. Uh, so we have instrument for lending volume using the borrowing volume size um, 
lending ratio and borrowing ratio. While uh, for borrowing funding, we um, we use instruments of the um, of the lending volume, the borrowing ratio, lending ratio, and, and size as well, and the size as a share of assets. On the results of our two stages, where uh, regression, which is what we used um, um, to control for heterogeneity, we um, found that. Um, Foreign banks are um, still um, uh, have a negative influence on the preference of the lender or the attractiveness of the lender, and we also find that um, Pan, -Afri Pan African Pan banks um, uh, positively influence the attractiveness of the lender, which is consistent with our first results. Um, we also see that um, CEO power has a negative effect on uh, the preference of the lender um, um, consistent with our uh, initial results from a random GLS pop. Um, we also see that uh, market power has a positive effect on the attractiveness of a borrower, um, uh, which is consistent with the results from our uh, initial random effects GLS model. Um, but we also observe that uh, the exchange rate uh, has a positive effect on the, on the attractiveness of borrowers in the market. Um, so in summary, uh, we find that um, our, our uh, results from our, from our two-state lead square regression is uh, largely in line with our initial findings from our GLS estimator. Um, Variance um, exists, however, with the effect of leverage remaining positive, but um, or statistically insignificant in um, the results from the two state least square compared to the initial results from the um, from the uh, GLS estimator. Um, we also see uh, that um, capital adequacy ratio, um, leverage, uh, lending volume have and size uh, positively uh, influence the attractiveness of the lender and all as well as stream rates and uh, has a positive influence, positive effect on the attractiveness of the borrower within the interbank markets. In conclusion, um, from our results, we see that um, the peer monitoring role of banks within the interbank markets is very much um, justified. Um, banks and we, this study has expanded the scope of understanding the level of peer um, monitoring that the interbank or causing the interbank markets. We see that governance, reputation, competitiveness, um, are factors which are considered by banks when carrying out um, interbank transactions and forming relationships within themselves. And uh, strong uh, or uh, negative re reputation, such as lending limits imposed by parent banks, by foreign banks, negatively uh, influence um, the, uh, the attractiveness of a lender. Um, whereas the positive reputation of um, you know of um, of um, of a bank like being owned by a pair of um, by other by another African bank um, do does have a positive effect on the attractiveness of the lender. So clearly, um, reputational differences would affect the um, attractiveness of banks as lenders within the market. Also, we see that governance structures, um, you know, for instance, um, to um, see power um, um, can affect the um, attractiveness um, of a of a lender in the interbank market. We also see that competitiveness um, uh, within the wider 
market, but um, is important uh, when lenders are considering uh, forming relationships with borrowers. Um, this information is, is important and part of what um, lenders look at uh, when they um, when they uh, uh, when they evaluate potential borrowing counterparts. And also, we also see that um, exchange rate regimes, um, in the case of devaluation and in the environment of devaluation, um, uh, banks that are more competitive are uh, also factor uh, as uh, as uh, banks um, to lend. To. This has some implications for practitioners, risk makers, peer regulation. Um, imperative for banking executives to consider um, these factors um, um, when, um, for instance, as a borrower, um, a borrowing in into bank markets, it's clear that your competitiveness um, within the wider bank markets affects your perception within the bank markets, and that can have causes for, for your access to liquidity. Um, I mean, policymakers too, um, um, from this study, you could see that um, foreign banks or the ownership of banks um, may affect their um, their lending um, relationships within the interbank markets, and um, this is particularly um, um, useful because um, the interbank market is the channel for redistribution of liquidity, and the Central bank tries to anchor it to enable um, um, liquidity redistribution amongst the banks. Now, if you have a network topology that has foreign banks, um, you know, at, at the hub, perhaps you may um, have to look at ways to encourage um, foreign banks uh, for foreign owned banks or to ensure that foreign owned banks aren't discriminating in terms of their um, of their um, lending um, and pretty much make sure that or, or mitigate against the potential negative uh, uh, negative reputation of, of foreign banks being streamed in terms of lending uh, because this wouldn't redistribute that liquidity effectively. And um, uh, clearly peer regulation is evident. Um, banks consider much more uh, you know, much well, other metrics that are not just uh, uh, or more non-traditional metrics um, when uh, evaluating um, uh, counterparts is either for lending or for borrowing. And because of the unsecured nature of interbank of this organized segment of the interbank market, relationship formation is important. And both practitioners, policymakers um, have to um, pay attention to uh, factors, to these factors of competitiveness, governance, and reputation that can affect either their ability to, to, to access liquidity within the markets or could affect the redistribution of liquidity within the markets um, um, through the non attractiveness of. of, of for the of relationship formation. So, thank you very much. And I am really um, looking forward to a lot of questions, a lot of comments. Um, this paper, uh, this study, I can still do with um, some, some, some good comments um, for, for it to be tweaked um, and polished properly. Well, thank you very much, uh, Anosti. We give a hand of applause to you for, um, you know, a very interesting paper. And uh, uh, I made sure I don't interrupt you. So uh, you went through uh, all the main issues of the paper from the uh, introduction, uh, the literature, the hypotheses uh, are formed from the literature, uh, um, the uh, measurement of the uh, key variables, the data that was put together to align with the measurement of the variables, 
And various specified models, um, then the testing results, conclusions, and the implications for uh, a policy and practice, uh, which are particularly interesting. Uh, I think, uh, you know, telling us that uh, banks do pay attention to their peers, to other banks as peers who operate in the interbank market. And uh, this is very interesting because uh, from the type, from um, the side of investors, uh, regulators, uh, um, other policymakers, to understand that the interbank market can be uh, a source of stability when peer pressure works, when the market discipline works, but it could also be a source of instability when banks collude. Uh, in the interbank market, uh, and uh, um, uh, they it could collude and uh, possibly derail uh, the bank rate or the central bank rate. Uh, and so, um, where you find this study uh, sheds um, extremely important light, I think for the first time ever, um, you do not uh, take a claim to say for the first time ever, but I can see new evidence that is very uh, interesting. Uh, for example, you know, does it matter how reputable the bank is uh, uh, when it enters the interbank market, either as a borrower or as a lender, or sometimes both a uh, borrowing and lending, even in the same night, in the same 24 hours of transactions in the interbank market? How about CEO power? The pop CEO, you know, a highly uh, a, uh, influential, you know, CEOs with high reputation and high power, uh, does that really matter? Uh, how about the ownership, whether they are foreign banks or Pan-African banks? And uh, there is another category uh, which is not clear that it comes out clearly, that is domestic banks. Uh, does that ownership structure matter? And what is interesting in your work is to say that the ownership does matter, especially when leverage is taken into account. In other words, a um, highly leveraged Foreign banks may be much more attractive as lenders, but not as borrowers. And so the interaction of ownership and leverage uh, is very important because, yes, the banks know how other banks work. They even know the leverage, the indebtedness. Uh, if a bank is going bankrupt, the ban other banks are likely to know, even before the central bank knows that the bank is, a, is about to go bankrupt. Uh, so um, this is, uh, uh, and then of course the competition. The competition is so important because they are all operating in the same market. And those which are highly competitive means basically they are, at, say for example, very attractive in the loan market. Uh, and therefore they may be able to uh, go into the bank market, raise uh, liquidity, more funds, rather than going to the central bank window. Uh, and maybe that makes them active. But can that, can that be the case all the time? Or, you know, um, uh, so this is very, very interesting. And uh, 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 let's see uh, um, uh, the comments, uh, questions, interaction. There are quite a number of people here who are close uh, to this, uh, uh, to the operations and uh, the interbank market, uh, both from the policy side and also from the research side. So I think let's um, open. Uh, the floor for discussion. Uh, and uh, please, um, uh, let me see if there's anything in the chat. Uh, not yet in the chat, so we'll operate by uh, uh, people putting up their hands to ask uh, uh, questions. Uh, who is going first? Maybe while a uh, uh, colleagues or participants uh, align um, uh, their questions. Uh, let me uh, flag up at least uh, one or two um, uh, issues uh, that uh, uh, may help looking, uh, which may need some attention. I think the, 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 the dichotomy of bank ownership into uh, yeah, the dichotomy of foreign bank ownership is very helpful here. It's very novel. A foreign ownership 
uh, is um, dichotomized or broken into two parts. One in the Pan-African banks. And um, in that table, like yeah, table one, these uh, Pan-African banks are a non-domestic banks which have headquarters uh, in Africa a, and a operating um, in that country, operating in Uganda. So those would be a Pan-African banks. A, and that's uh, quite, um, a, there's a large presence and a large a, a growing sector of uh, Pan-African banks a, as in the previous papers um, by um, Kanga, um, uh, Somare and myself have noted out. The second part is the, you know, the, the, the foreign banks. A, um, uh, and the foreign banks is defined as banks which have headquarters outside uh, the country uh, in which the banks are located. Now, when we look at those two measures, uh, there is uh, two missing components of ownership. One, I think, is the foreign banks, which are not Pan-African. Okay, so um, you, one could draw up a, uh, four types of ownership. A, one, a, um, Pan-African banks. Two, domestic banks. Uh, three, a, uh, foreign banks, including Pan-African. And four, foreign banks, which are not Pan-African. Okay. Uh, it may well be that the data availability makes the partitioning a little bit difficult. That may be the case. But if um, a data availability made it possible, then one would have four partitions. And maybe any of those uh, four partitions of uh, bank ownership may play a role in how banks under each of the four categories I, uh, participate um, in the um, uh, in the bank markets. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think the other, um, the second observation I make um, um, is a little bit uh, on the scientific side. A uh, the endogenous variables, uh, um, the BPI and the LOPI, a uh, 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 strong variables and very well conceived. Uh, um, but they are measured as an, an as an as an index. The index is very well uh, presented. Uh, um, uh, uh, in I think questions one and two in the in the, in the slides. What is not clear and what may be helpful to explain uh, to participants are the weights used to work out the BPI and LOPI. And that's simply because in index number theory, um, the weights can make a difference. Uh, um, the way the index can go up and down depending on how the various components are weighted. That may just be explained by a footnote. Uh, to say we used average uh, um, uh, um, weights or uh, we run a regression and got the weights for the components based on the regression analysis and so forth. That's uh, uh, two, two comments. Yeah, I don't know whether I want to respond to those two comments or yeah, maybe you can respond and then we can look around for any additional comments. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks a lot, uh, Victor. I, um, yeah, your comments were uh, very, uh, 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 I uh, appreciate them, taking them into consideration. Um, in terms of the partitioning of the banks, I think, yes, um, perhaps we could extend this to, I'm sure, for the four different categories. At the moment, um, we show um, just two of those categories, which is foreign only and um, Pan-African only. Um, but and perhaps we combine um, foreign plus Pan-African and domestic separately 
uh, it could also give us some some more insights, and that would be that would be very useful. Um, in terms of the BPI um, and the LPI, we'll be to um, uh, possibly include that um, in in the paper. Um, it's um, Yes, the in degree and out degree are uh, the major components of the BPI and the LPI. And so, um, but we will, uh, um, we will look at, um, I'll definitely make sure to um, explain uh, a bit more around the, um, how the um, indexes are, the indices are calculated. Yeah, yeah. I, I was really, I think, on the uh, the way the index sum is constructed. Uh, once you put in data and spreadsheet, uh, um, uh, of course, uh, one way of addressing it is to uh, change the weights uh, um, and then uh, uh, derive uh, the indices uh, and um, uh, show how different indices are, uh, are aligned various weights and maybe uh, uh, if they are highly correlated, they are highly positively perfectly correlated, then it doesn't matter the weights are not going to make a change uh, uh, in the use of that, um, of the different way um, in the safety and the regression. That's great. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I don't see any hand up asking for clarification or asking a question. So oh, I see only one one hand coming up now. I see hi, now. Victor. Yeah, hi. Yeah, hi. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Hi, Anoshi. Thank you very much for your uh, presentation. I have to leave and come back, so I'm afraid I missed a few bits of it. But I think it's uh, absolutely interesting work that you've been doing here. I was just um, wondering, or maybe... Uh, possible ways that you could extend this work or something. Um, uh, I was wondering whether political connections have a role to play here. So whether banks that are um, more politically connected uh, could, um, you know, have, uh, I mean, besides CEO power, could have uh, uh, an impact on your uh, uh, results. Okay, yeah. Um, um, thank you very much, Athena, for for that. Um, uh, that's um, that's a very good uh, possible extension. Um, actually, um, in fact, um, in our measure of CEO power, there are several dimensions of um, CEO power, and um, uh, that have been used uh, previously in literature. Um, CEO power can be looked at um, from the from the perspective of board control, um, shareholding control, um, um, length of service, and personal networks. Um, um, so, you know, did the CEOs, you know, have they worked in the same place at other bank CEOs or when, or part of the same Adumini Association or um, sit on the same um, uh, or belong to similar clubs and things like that. That's a form of like political, um, uh, should I say, political dimension, um, which um, I, would, I would try to construct the data, but there were too many data gaps, unfortunately. So in terms of CEO power, we could only look at it from one dimension, which was CEO tenure. But um, perhaps um, there could be other... Uh, it could be another measure, like you said, you know, outside you know, the context of perhaps CEO power to look at political power um, um, in some in some way. In fact, that because like that was actually the initial thought that or the initial idea that led me to CEO power. Because uh, I don't know if maybe you have some suggestions uh, of other ways to to examine uh, you know that uh, political. Influence, uh, perhaps. Yeah, no, absolutely. I see what you mean. Um, 
political connections uh, uh, can be an account the, in the sense of the uh, CEO power. Um, I understand the bits about um, data limitations here. Uh, it's just, you know, a thought and maybe something that uh, you could add to your measure of CO power, or maybe explore if the data, of course, is available. But absolutely interesting work, Anosi. Thank you very much for this presentation. Uh, thank you, uh, Athena. I think you have a very important point here. Uh, uh, political connections among banks uh, for and uh, firms uh, is a very contemporary issue. Uh, um, uh, uh, is coming in a, uh, very strongly in the new literature uh, on banks and farms, especially the corporate governance uh, 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 banks and farms. Uh, and uh, uh, our colleague, um, uh, um, uh, Neil Shamish, will be presenting a paper early next year um, on this. Uh, but for this particular work uh, that Anosi has shared with us, um, I think um, uh, even if the data were not available, I think there would be a need of adding an, uh, a footnote or some explanation to say uh, uh, it would have that CEO power, uh, sorry, that political connection of the banks is likely to play an important role, either a role as a lender or as a borrower. Uh, because of the nature of our political connection has uh, in terms of the um, extension of loans uh, um, uh, uh, or even uh, additional taking of deposits uh, uh, from uh, government agencies or advancing loans to government agencies. And the typical measurement of this uh, in the literature, both on firms and banks, has been in terms of board composition. To see, for example, if the uh, um, the a chairman of the board a, uh, is appointed by government, or whether the board ownership a, uh, is dominated by government, or um, the proportion of um, a, um, a government members on the board, also uh, in terms of the a government ownership a, uh, of the of the bank, in terms of the proportion. Uh, of um, capital uh, that is uh, or equity that equity capital that is owned by by uh, by, uh, by by government. So yes, of course, and also you are right uh, in the sense that if polit if the data on a board membership and also on capital structure ownership of the bank is not uh, comprehensive enough to shed light into political economic bank, then you can't play with it. That at least should be could be acknowledged as an important uh, consideration uh, in this discourse. Yeah, I think, I think yeah. Yeah, I think, but, uh, I think also to um, uh, just first, uh, uh, in, in, line, in line with that thought, I was just thinking that perhaps um, I can explore, um, you know, maybe using um, board composition, um, perhaps, um, um, you know, some measure of, uh, Political or previous or any form of political affiliation of board members mm -hmm. um, as as some form of proxy. I think that 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 would uh, that could also be a way something that I would uh, I would take into consideration as an extension. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Th thanks, Anosi, for appreciating that. Um, I know for sure since I know those banks uh, uh, very closely uh, that. Um, uh, they ha do have a little political appointees on the board, uh, uh, quite a lot, almost in every bank. Uh, but of course, the issue is whether the data is available to give you um, enough. Uh, uh, you can't get hold of a reasonably good data um, um, uh, that could be uh, enable you to go into uh, the detail. Thanks, indeed. Uh, very important point. Uh, Ola Depo. The floor is yours. Hello, good afternoon. Hi, hi, you're at Apple. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, yeah, yes. Yes. congrats, Alexi. Thank you for uh, the paper. Congrats to you, uh, PhD. Yeah, so I, I don't know. So, you know, I, I think the paper is very relevant, you know, when we look at what uh, the direction of central banks 
terms, uh, you know, and, and uh, um, banking supervision and regulation. Recent times, you know, uh, regulators are now focusing more on ensuring that banks are liquid you know, to carry out their day to day operations. And the interbank market is very important in that regard. So, for me, I think I'm more interested in understanding how these relationships play out when banks are in stressed period. I don't know if it's something you covered you know, in the paper or which has been covered in the literature uh, before now. But I think it's something uh, that is important to look at. Such that when banks are in stressed period, especially during the liquidity crisis, these relationships, they still exist or there's a change in the dynamics of this relationship. Um, okay, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dapo. Um, yeah, it's, um, um, you know, it's um, it's something, yeah, important. I think that's a very um, important point, you know. Um, what is the, what, how do relationships play out um, during, um, you know, during times of, of distress? And I think that's the whole um, point of relationship, um, relationship lending and relationships in the interbank markets. Um, it will be good to cover a period of stress, um, you know, so that maybe the 2008 uh, banking crisis, or financial crisis rather, um, you know, to speak specifically, I mean, those uh, sort of times. Um, um, and yeah, so I think it's a it's a matter of um, you know uh, covering a, a data a data and period um, um, where, where where there is significant stress, and then to see if these um, um, these relationships and these factors still to still hold. I, I think that's that's very much important, and that's why uh, interbank studies sometimes are a little bit fine in between because. Uh, Interesting uh, things happen, particularly during uh, times of crisis, and uh, certain uh, different behaviors uh, can be observed. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I think that's uh, that that that's that's very uh, that would definitely be I think, a good extension uh, of the study. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Oradapo. Um, uh, uh, for that important question, and uh, thank you, um, Anosi, for the response. Uh, yeah, it is true that during uh, a financial crisis, um, uh, there is an exogenous shock uh, uh, to the banking system uh, in the same country. Uh, but different banks uh, uh, will react differently. Uh, and maybe uh, what this will show us is the um, the um, uh, uh, the resilience of uh, uh, the resilience uh, or across banks uh, um, uh, uh, of the shock um, uh, the re bank resilience the shock uh, across the banking system uh, and uh, it may well be the case that. Um, um, uh, for example, as you can see, that banks are responding differently to um, foreign exchange a, um, uh, a depreciation. A, a, this is a, in one of your results. But during a shock, some a, a banks may um, um, a suffer more a, during um, a depreciation. Others will take more opportunity during depreciation, especially if they are you know, foreign exchange traders. The percentage of foreign exchange trading in their total portfolio uh, uh, will matter. So there's all these very interesting aspects that make the work unique. Uh, uh, if data is not there, just simply uh, you know acknowledge them, but acknowledge that you know they are important. Uh, definitely, Radapo's observation uh, on uh, resilience or non-resilience to shocks uh, at the bank level uh, is uh, very important. Thank you. Uh, let's see, uh, do we have uh, any more uh, questions, um, actions? 
a um, the paper by a Anosi uh, will be available uh, a for detailed reading a uh, on the Center for Rural Finance a uh, working person is very soon. Uh, I think uh, he's going to make a couple of um, um, you know changes and footnotes and of course acknowledging uh, this seminar uh, uh, in the version uh, that we put uh, out uh, on the. Center for Go Finance Working Paper Series uh, by the end of next week. Um, okay. uh, sorry, yeah, I, just, I, I don't yeah. know. So I have a direct question from Kaliba to me. But the oh. question is given the inherent instability of the interbank markets, did your study take cognizance of interventions by the um, Bank of Uganda to bring stability to the market? Okay. Um, that, that's a very good question. Um, that's a very good question. Interesting um, about one interesting thing about the data period that we cover um, in Uganda is during this period, the Bank of Uganda didn't intervene at any point in time in the overnight lending segment. They only began to intervene in that segment of the market in um, in um, late 2019, early 2020. So all transactions going on in the overnight segment of the market um, are purely um, um, peer-driven. The Bank of Uganda's policy um, targeting had always previously been around the seven-day seven um, interbank rates. And it's in that um, space that they intervene. But in the overnight segment, um, they never intervened. Um, so um, all transactions are going on uh, within that period were purely um, peer to peer. So that's part of the things that made um, you know, the, um, this um, case of Uganda um, an interesting one to look at from a relationship perspective, right? because all the transactions driven or all the transactions conducted within the Within the within the overnight segments, and probably driven by by um, um, uh, peer, uh, or we're probably peer to peer, no recourse to the to the bank of Uganda too. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Kaliba, for that question. So it appears I'm missing some questions, right? Because I can't find it in the chat. Uh, maybe uh, Men, can you help uh, if there are some a um a comments you can see on your system which i'm unable to see uh, any hands up. yeah no 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 comments in the chat okay 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 um okay uh it appears uh we do not have any further comment uh maybe i give a uh, one minute to uh, and no see if you want to say something in uh, in the conclusion, and then we conc we uh, we conclude. We only have about nineteen minutes, so we almost come in the end of the timing. But we um you can have a minute or two to say something. Okay, thanks, uh, thanks, Victor. Um, um, yeah, I just um, wanted to say that um, please, if there are any comments. Um, um, Please feel free to share uh, with me via email. Um, I hope my email address um, is available to be on the uh, initial announcement. But um, um, I think uh, Meng uh, can always provide my email. I, I really would like um, uh, many more comments um, on how on on this paper and how um, you know we can be further enhanced, um, or if there are any. Um, um, potential issues, um, you know, that are not um, that are not well addressed. Um, yeah, uh, I want to uh, give my sincere appreciation to the team at um, the Center for Global Finance for giving me the opportunity to present this. And um, um, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you too, Anosi. Let's show a hand of uh, applause to Anosi. Uh, for this uh, uh, very, very interesting uh, paper, uh, very interesting research. 
uh, it paves new directions in our understanding of what really uh, motivates lending and borrowing uh, um, uh, um, among banks in the interbank market. Uh, and um, it has also uh, generated quite a lot of interesting uh, policy aspects in terms of attractiveness uh, as um, a, a counterparty in the interbank market. I, um, we will have uh, a break. Uh, next week is reading week. Uh, so um, we don't have a seminar during the reading week next week, but we'll come back uh, two weeks from now, the same Wednesday, uh, one to three for another seminar this time uh, in the area of FinTech, um, especially FinTech and FinTech enabled services, uh, where we'll get um, uh, a presentation from other colleagues within the network. For now, uh, thank you, Anosi. Thank you very much, participants. And um, yes, have a nice evening. We'll see you the week after next week. Thank you, indeed. Thank you.